I talked to a, uh, one of the OTA people that I coach. He was just flabbergasted that you had a personality. <laughs> <laughs> swear, swear to God, this kid is like, so I heard, he's like, I heard the podcast thing. He's like, and you know, like Jonathan Goodman wouldn't even stay on topic. You had to reel him in. I'm so shocked by that. Cause you know, I, he seems like such a professional, but I was like, no, he's like that. All, I was like, he's scatterbrain. Like this is him all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, is, this is normal. John. He was That's shocked. Amazing. He was shocked by any inkling of personality that you had, John. Like it just, just flabbergasted that. Aren't we like, all? <laughs> and, he, and, and the kid goes, and he says funny stuff. Well, this? wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. actually I'm funny. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's actually not an automaton. Yeah, there's, there's a soul in there. Uh, so we've got the uh, the classic starter pack uh, from Ball Hammock. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ball Hammock, they protect your boys. Ball oh. Hammock, Ball Hammock, they they help you stop the family jewels from getting crushed in the grundle. Oh, um, God. <laughs> What? I'm not. I'm not. Exu- I'm not exactly sure what the Grundle is, but I'm pretty sure that that's the monster from Beowulf. Um, for for our for our literary aficionados out there listening, um, it's it's also got a it's got a gusseted crotch. Uh, that's what I like to have. So so you can do the splits if you're into that sort of thing. Ball hammock. Oh. You know, there is no coupon code. No, cute. There's no. You've got to buy it at full price. <laughs> Discount code freedom. Um, <laughs> so, so, sw- switching over, uh, that that transitions us right into the PT PT distinction. Uh, PT distinction. It works while you sleep, so you can schedule everything and relax in the knowledge your clients are fully taken care of. Not unlike your boys in the ball hammock. Uh, Jonathan Goodman in his infinite wisdom has worked out a tremendous deal for uh, PT distinction. Uh, you get a deal, you get 60 days of PT distinction at no cost, free 99, uh, which is my favorite price. Go on over to onlinetrainer.com slash PTD. Take advantage of that tremendous deal. Not to be outdone, the Online Trainer Academy, uh, which we're all graduates of the Online Trainer Academy here. We're all geniuses. That's why and that's why we call this the Online Trainer Show. OTA is it's the industry's gold standard in online trainer education. Powerful techniques and strategies guaranteed to results. Slide to the, the OTA. We're, we're at, at onlinetrainer.com slash academy. Uh, get yourself enrolled in the OTA. And, uh, and let's get this thing. Let's get this thing going. Let's get this podcast off, off to a great start, Jonathan. What do you say? Hello, my name is Jonathan Goodman and welcome to the Online Trainer Show. Today is episode 10 and I have a feeling that my brain isn't going to work so good because all I've eaten today is cake. (laughs) That said, our topic is why memberships are a horrible idea for just about every trainer. Thanks for being here. This is the Online Trainer Show, Trainer Show, Trainer Show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast. So, Jonathan, anything interesting going on in your world today, my friend? I know, I know you're a man of many skills. You're a gentleman about town, a man of leisure, as they say. Uh, so what's, what's going on in the, in the Goodman camp? Yeah, I mean, probably, probably my favorite thing that's going on right now is uh, Calvin's new favorite song. Calvin, I guess, I guess I say this all the time. Like, if you're a parent, you kind of get it. The stuff that you say to your kids, they repeat back to you. And you're like, I never say that. But then you're like, no, 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 I say that all the time. So I, I guess all of the time, Allison and I say, hey, you want to see something cool, Calvin? When we're trying to get him to do something. <laughs> Instead of saying, do this, we're like, you want to see something cool. So he's like... You want to see something cool? Like every time it's like, hey, watch me do this. Watch me do this. Watch me. It's like, you want to see something cool. So now his favorite thing is, you want to hear a funny song? Oh. So, <clears throat> so we, say, we say yes. He's like, daddy, daddy, you want to hear a funny song? Old McDonald had a poop. Calvin flushed it down the toilet. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Around. That's um, that's what's lighting up my life right now. I've heard that song 
at least a dozen times in the last two days. It's highly and creative, highly creative. I, I expect it. to hear it again when I get home today, and I'm looking forward to it. Genius. It's a Beethoven of our times. He is. He is. He's very clever. Very clever. You know, that's clever. Uh, now, Keto, I don't mean to expose you here in front of a national <laughs> audience. Um, <laughs> Although well, we you're do totally that literally, up. yeah. Although we every do that every time, single episode, every, every episode, the only episode, episode we didn't expose her was last episode. And I, you know what I just figured out, Lynn? <laughs> what? You know what I just figured out? She wasn't even there. <laughs> you, you weren't. <laughs> were you not here? <laughs> she wasn't even there last episode. Did you even notice? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize that she wasn't here. <laughs> Bro, it was just me and you the whole time. Oh, I thought. Um, I, I thought she had her video turned off. I am anticipating, you know, just like a whole bunch of messages and reviews coming in about people having missed me last episode. So I'm just saying. <laughs> like, like that one That's review. What, what was that one review? Um, the female. John Ren <laughs> and the female. <laughs> uh, yeah. We were missing, and that's what was missing last episode. You know, we were talking about what was uh, missing. It turns out we were missing the female. The female. The female. <laughs> yes. Hey, but Amber talking to about ball hammock, so all is good right. as far as I'm See what, what happens when you are not there? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. right. You see what happens when we're missing a wheel. Uh, this thing runs off the rails, you know. But I guess if you had never been absent, we never, we would have never gotten our new sponsor. <laughs> exactly. So, right, right. So, that, so you're that welcome. Makes sense. So, so, uh, so back to what I was saying, you know, it's never my goal to expose you except when we're on the pa- podcast every single time. So I saw some Facebook official news. Oh, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, and, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. you know, something about a, something about a Jedi and a, <laughs> um, a rela- I, I can't remember. <laughs> Bring us up to speed on what, oh, what transpired on your Facebook Oh my Here gosh, recently. of course. Okay, so again, let me repeat how excited it makes me that my life provides so much material for this book. <laughs> it's half of what we do here. <laughs> so now, um, yeah, so what Ren is referring to is that uh, my boyfriend, yes, you know, the Jedi mayor that you all made fun of in episode <laughs> seven, as if I could forget, um, he officially changed Jedi, our relationship Jedi status mayor to us. At Instagram, if anybody's doing it. At in Instagram, Jedi yes. Mayor. So yes. he changed the relationship status on Facebook to now, like it's like official, official, official. Whoa! That right. we are like together, like a thing. Facebook, <laughs> Facebook official. Yeah, That's you know it's deal. not legit until deal. it's like Facebook legit, right? So I guess yeah. hashtag. Yeah. No, you know. I mean a relationship has got to be in like phase three of like a total four phases for it to right. be Facebook official these days. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody starts out. I, I, I talk about this all the time with with some of my friends who are still single. I have legitimately no clue how to date today. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's so it's different. different from yeah. how it was the last time I was dating anybody, which was, I mean, really, Allison and I have been together for, for 10 years now. This year was our 10 year anniversary. Mm-hmm. 10 years wow. ago, I mean, I did a little bit of internet dating like back in the day, but this was like plenty of fish days. Yeah. Right? It's totally I mean, different now. Now you now you know whenever you go in and meet somebody, you're like, yo, this person is legitimately dating ten other people, eight other people right now. <laughs> how do you like how do you even there's this absurd amount of choice? <laughs> right. And there's this like grass is greener on the other side, constant underhang of I don't even know how I would do it like I I really it's such a psychological game of yeah tell us about you trying it I feel like that'd be entertaining yeah like I tried it after my separation and then I was you know alone for a while and I was like all right fine I'll give online you know I tried I do online training I can do online dating right like everything Mm -hmm. is online now I don't know and then yeah so I did and it's nothing different about those two things nothing different it's the exact same thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah, no, it's awful because what I discovered it's is awful. that <laughs> it's, awful. it's awful. What I discovered is that most men, in my experience, to what I was able to see, most men horribly lack in the art of conversation. 
They just do not Most know. Men, think about what you just said there. Most they, men like, horribly lack in the art of conversation. Oh, okay, Can fine. Can we just it's, revel in the awesomeness me... of that sentence? For a moment? <laughs> my second language so i'm just gonna leave that there i'm podcasting in in not my mother tongue so right, there's right, that right. um so remember, anyway carolina it's when terrible. we were in the dominican republic and, and you won <laughs> oh, like God. a contest through our company so you won this trip and I was yes i did and uh-huh. we went to we went to sign in to the hotel and yeah. i was with you because it uh-huh. was like under my name and my credit card yes and so of course you start speaking in spanish uh-huh and they and and they thought that we were together and they were like yes. congratulating you they're like oh he looks like a really good catch that's what I yes. assume they said in Spanish. Oh, yes, totally, totally. They were like, oh, my God, he's the handsomest man we've ever seen. And I'm like, right? No. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, my, for my little bit of Spanish, that's what I understood. Nobody so, hijacks a story like Jonathan. <laughs> you, like, hey, you go along thinking you're they, gonna, you, you know, you worked up your own story in your mind. You, you're headed to your punchline and Jonathan Goodman will totally interrupt. This is what <laughs> this is what I mean, Carolina, you get this like every good politician has their oh, own God. agenda of what they want to talk about at any one point in time. <laughs> totally. And they're just totally. really good at taking a topic and a question and spinning it in so many ways Into, yeah. that you forgot what the original question or topic was, but now you're so interested in what's going on that you forget. And that's, that's how this works. Um, which, which is kind of what we do on this podcast. Like when you were telling, you were telling us before about how, uh, every, about how somebody you're coaching, one of our, one of our online trainer Academy students just assumed that I had no personality. (laughs) He was so shocked. He said, said, Oh my God, I heard the podcast. And Jonathan Goodman has a personality. It's like, yeah, he's he's actually not a fitness terminator. He's not a C one thousand. He's not an automaton. He he actually stretch. Like Right. You know what he said? He said, and he said funny things. (laughs) So yeah, he's he does that. He does that. So, I hit like one out of ten. Yeah. So, <laughs> Keto, I force is strong with your relationship. Oh, um, thank I do you. Too. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> I do too. I'm glad you found a good man in Barrie, Ontario. Yeah. Got off, she got off the internet and she just took a stroll down to City Hall. Easy peasy. <laughs> <That's> exactly- <laughs> Easy peasy. Isn't that what everybody does? Wasn't like, it- I don't, what? Isn't that no, how you date? It- what? <laughs> When you got, wasn't it like a like a, a celebrity dancing like competition where you guys were paired oh together? Isn't that how you got to know each other? Is that yeah. is that what happened? That's yeah. that's how we met a couple oh of years ago. Yes, yes, that's a real that's a that's the real that's story. Real that's an actual real story. We did Dancing with the Stars Sweet for Jesus. Barry Ontario, and yes. I was the professional dancer, and he was the star, and I taught him how to salsa dance. <laughs> I should never have been told this story. <laughs> Never. You've, you've made a grave error here today. <laughs> Telling me this story. Oh, my gosh. I'll send you pictures next time. <laughs> oh, man. This, this is too good. There's way too much happening on episode 10. Um, Jonathan, I assume that we have a topic today. I never know what it is. I used to say it, but I've given up on that. I don't, I don't know what's, you know, whatever. I've done my part for today. You did. You did well today, actually. You guys, we. I feel like we all did well today. Turn, turn my mic off. I feel like we all did really well today. There was a period before we started recording where a train went by your your <laughs> apartment, man. That um, I was not. What's what's the right word? I was not optimistic about today's show when that happened. But but I feel like we're pulling it together. Today's today's topic is memberships. Amber, our uh, 16-year-old producer, <laughs> decided, to, decided to bring this up. And I actually love it. She gave, me, she gave us a whole bunch of potential topics and, and stuff that we might you know, hit in the future. But I wanted to talk about memberships because I get a lot of inquiries. I'm sure you guys do too. I get a lot of inquiries of trainers who want to start a membership program. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I totally get why. And I want to shoot down that dream so forcefully today (laughs) by showing you the realities of what it's actually like that you will never think about that this, this totally idiotic business structure 
ever again. <laughs> because I think one of the things that's most important for people entering into online training is knowing what to completely ignore. Because there's so much unsubstantiated nonsense from people who really have no experience or no experience that you can really benefit from. Like, like I've said in the past, if somebody has success with one thing one time, there is no reason to believe that person and put any stead into what that person teaches you. Assuming you can prove that they've actually had success, there still isn't. Somebody has to be successful in multiple situations, at least two, probably three, in order for you to have any sort of faith that you can benefit from whatever they're telling you, because their situation is inevitably going to be different than you. There's simply too many co-founding factors, but there are fundamental underlying principles. And one of those fundamental underlying principles is understanding customer acquisition, is understanding the math of the business. And so that's what I want to talk about with with membership sites. So the general idea of a lot of people to membership sites, the, the part that is perhaps attractive or sounds attractive about membership sites is, well, okay, uh, it's going to be way easier selling a lot of people like a $20 service a month mm-hmm. than it is trying to sell people a $200 or $300 service or what, what we teach our people to do, some of our people as they get more advanced, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars for 12 weeks service. It's going to be a lot easier sending them 20 bucks. I'll be able to get way more people. And look at this, look at how incredible this is. If all I get is 50 people a month paying me 200 bucks, well then at the end of a year, right, look at how this math adds up. Look at how much money I'm making. And all that I need to do is send, you know, one program one time to everybody and it'll be super easy and I'll be on easy street. This is simply not the reality. I try. But it's simply not the reality. The first is a quite a quite simple truism of any business, any business across the board, which is that people who pay less give you the most amount of trouble. Facts. Yep. Yes. yes. Truth. Yes. Preach and it. yes. Preach it. We've yes. all seen it. We have people who we give free memberships to at the gym <laughs> who would complain that the towels aren't clean. People who we give free memberships to where we provide free towels. Then we have clients who train three times a week. So they're spending three to four thousand dollars every three months with us at the gym who bring their own towels. It's that different. And this is just across the board. Your best customers are the ones who pay you the most money and are going to be the ones who are going to be the most respectful. Yeah. And so building a business model whereby you acquire a ton profitably, which you probably can. I'll get into that in a moment. But building a business model where you can acquire a lot of people who pay a very small amount of money self-selects for people who are going to be really, really annoying to deal with which means your customer service is going to be a nightmare. Your administration is going to be a nightmare and it's going to be a lot of extra time for you. So that's just like number one. But then, I mean, even the littlest bit of math, let's say you want to make, I'll just use an arbitrary number. I'm going to use this magical hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Cause every trainer wants to be a six figure trainer, which is like not actually a, a good goal to have. I mean, $100,000 is kind of a meaningful goal. Like, what does that mean for you? Like $100,000, if you live in New York City, is not enough to sleep on a friend's couch. $100,000, if you live in the middle of the country in the United States or in a lot of places in Eastern, even Western Europe or Asia, you can live like a king or queen. Um, and you don't even need a hundred thousand. So like it, you know, it's not that good of a goal, but whatever, we'll say a hundred thousand dollars. If you're charging 20 bucks a month, you need 5,000 months of membership. Wow. So, so that's not necessarily 5,000 people, right? That's 5,000 months of membership at 20 bucks a month to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. So let's go on the assumption. And I'll tell you why this is an assumption that people stay for four months in your membership. Now that is high end. Most people who join a membership program actually join a membership program with the stated internal goal of canceling that before the second payment. Mm. Most people who join are joining with set plans to cancel before the second payment comes up. Basically nobody joins a membership and they're like, I'm just going to do this forever. 
because it's not really how it goes. Right. So, so three to four months is actually a high end goal. That means that you have amazing onboarding. That means that you really understand retention, which means you're really good. You're really good at keeping people around. You've built a great mm-hmm. community in there. And then you might be able to keep people for four to six months. Like, but like four months, I would say is, is the high end these days of membership that you can realistically expect to keep the majority of your people. Um, there's always going to be outliers, right, who stay for longer. So at four months now, you need 1,250 people, right? Because if people are staying for four months, you need 1,250 people in order to get to that 5,000 months. So now you need to acquire 1,250 customers in a year, which means that your customer acquisition cost and marketing efforts need to be huge, Because you're going to go way beyond anybody who knows you and anybody who trusts you. The only way that a membership model can really work out is if you have a massive celebrity platform. Like I'm not talking even like 20, 30,000 like followers. I'm talking a massive celebrity platform that continues to grow organically over time. Mm. That's basically the only way that you could make this work. And, And that's pretty rare. Most people listening to this aren't like that. So now your customer acquisition costs are getting to be really, really high because the colder traffic, basically, the further you go away from people you're already connected to, the more degrees of separation the colder the traffic is, the more expensive it's going to be to acquire that customer. Generally, in the fitness, in, in, in fitness world today, it depends on like your specialty. It depends on what you're selling for. But if you're selling for fat loss, if you're selling for muscle gain, you're going to be $120 to $150 customer acquisition costs. Once you, once you get beyond, that's why like all of these Facebook marketing experts only showcase testimonials from <laughs> the first like couple weeks that somebody's worked with them mm-hmm. because you can acquire customers relatively cheaply, most people in the first couple of weeks, because all you're doing is taking out the low hanging fruit of people you're already kind of connected to. Right. Once you get beyond that, nobody you're connected to costs start to go up, which is why you need to really, also you need to, this is like if you're really skilled acquiring customers, by the way, with Facebook ads, which also means that you need to be, you need to have good copywriting, you need to have good landing pages, you need to have a good conversion mechanism, all this kind of stuff, right? I, I, this is a job for multiple people. Mm-hmm. But even then, now you're at 100 to $120 customer acquisition cost alone. Not to mention your software cost, not to mention your, your people cost, not to mention refunds, everything like that, churn, you know, pe- like I said, people leaving after one or two months. And if you're charging 20 or 30 bucks a month, you're actually in the negative on your membership site <laughs> as the train rolls in past Ren's apartment again. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it, Ren. You were late on the mute. <laughs> you were late on the mute. And... And so you can immediately see why this model now, when you start to break down the numbers a little bit, starts to break down very quickly. You have a nightmarish clientele, a massive job to acquire customers. You're probably almost for sure, if you need to acquire customers at that scale and you're making that little from them, acquiring them at a loss, which means you also need a really strong back end. So if you already are full, with training clients and you don't want to hire another trainer or trainers to work under you, which you probably should be. But if you really don't want to do that, maybe put a membership program underneath, but it's probably still not worth it Mm -hmm. because acquiring these customers, if you've got a good conversion system for them, costs the same as acquiring a training client. That is by definition, high yield, high margin. Somebody who, so, so think about, you want to make that same $100,000 a year. If you're charging $300 a month and you're doing a 90 day plan, like, like you're keeping a client for 90 days, basically we don't recommend anybody sign up a client month by month. Like you want to mm-hmm. get a three month commitment, ideally get them to pay in full for three months, but get a three month commitment. You need 111 clients. So you need 111 clients for three month periods at $300 a month, which means you need 28 new clients a month. 
28 new clients a month, 111 clients total, versus 1,250 clients is the difference between online training and a membership program. And even if you are busy as an online trainer, first of all, you probably don't have, unless you've worked with us at the Online Trainer Academy, like you probably don't have great systems, which means that you're over busy because you're doing, like, like the reality of it is automation and technology is not meant to eliminate humans. It's meant to maximize the place where humans show up, where humans are needed. A great online training program doesn't eliminate the trainer. It maximizes the trainer. It automates out all of the little stuff and, and good systems and good tech systems and potentially VAs and salespeople and stuff like that. They, they eliminate the trainer from doing all of the stuff that a trainer shouldn't do so that the trainer can show up in greater capacity where he or she should be. So first of all, if you think you're too busy as a trainer already, and that's why you're thinking of a membership site, you probably don't have very good systems. <laughs> and even if you do have good systems, well, then plug a few more trainers in underneath you. Right. If you have that many, like you're going to make way more, you're going to get way less headache. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to make passive income, write a book and sell it. <laughs> like don't, don't promise people that you're going to deliver something new every single month and get on that hamster wheel because all you're doing is undercutting yourself. People who might pay you 300 bucks a month, they're not going to pay you 20 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Write a book and sell it for 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And then upsell that book to your training. Now it's a lot of the lead generator that's passive income. Get those, get those people to work for you. So like for those reasons, the odds that a membership program is right for you as a personal trainer, as anybody involved in the fitness industry, is so low that blindly almost across the board, I don't recommend it. When you're still muted, you're trying to talk, but you muted yourself when the train went by. <laughs> and then Amber had to change where her video was, and we got to see what was on her desk, and it was an empty bag of Tostitos. Yum. I'm very jealous. <laughs> well, I don't know about Amber, but I meant to do my mistake. That was on purpose, to give you something to talk about. Hers was an actual legitimate mistake. I'm just a paid actor here. Um, There's no mistake you, in my snack. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. The dog's not in my house, by the way. I know I had the train, but it's, I don't have the dog. Uh, um, Amber, who did let the dogs out of your house? Who, 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 who? So, who, who, who? So, I heard a story about those guys. One of my old clients. Here we go. One of my old clients, his name was Bruce. He was a client of mine for many, many years. Awesome, awesome guy. Like, we became, like, like anybody who's been a trainer. Like, he was we were basically buddies hanging out by the end of it. You right. know, it was just, yeah. I felt bad taking his money because we were just, I looked forward to hanging out with him so much. So he was golfing in Bahamas and he told me a story. He came back from his vacation and he's just like, I have the most amazing thing to tell you. It's like, what are the, what are the, who let the dogs out guys? Something, something boys. I, I can't remember. Amber looked that up. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, so he was hey, Baja, so, Baja boys. Baja boys. That's what it was. So he went well, golfing with the Baja that? boys okay. because I guess there's I guess there's three of them, and they needed a fourth to make a foursome to golf with. Oh, so he happened to be the fourth person to make the foursome. no way. What? And he's that just like he's nice. like these dudes have done nothing else <laughs> since that song. <laughs> <laughs> they basically just live in the Bahamas. And like, just, I don't know how true this is. It's like, they basically, the royalties they get on that song, every yeah. sports event, every, everything right. plays that song, right? right. Like that oh is gosh. one of the most profitable songs ever. Talk about passive income. Oh my gosh. Yeah. See, just write a, write, yeah. Write better. a book or, you know, a one hit song, like. Be the Baja boys. Right? Be the Baja boys. <laughs> Be the Baja boys. But isn't that the craziest thing? And he's just like, yeah, these, the amount of weed these guys smoked on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, I bet. He's, he's just like, I don't, I don't even smoke. And I, I couldn't see straight by the end. <laughs> like, I swung and missed my Man. ball. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> so many corollaries to other points in this uh, podcast, um, especially when you say ball. Um, but <laughs> bringing it, circling it back around. So, so Jonathan, I'm, I'm getting the I'm getting the impression by what you shared with us that uh, you may not be a big fan of the subscription model. 
And uh, you know what it is? You know what it is? <laughs> it's not that I'm not a big fan of it. I, I'm speaking from experience. I've done three subscription models on big scales. We had the PTDC inner circle for a while. Mm. It was $5 a month. I think it was $10 a month, five if you bought like a year in advance or something like that. Okay. And all we did is we, we, it was one webinar a month. This was many years ago. We had something like 700 people in there. I shut it down because like, I didn't think that we were adding much value to people. And really you can't build a business on $5 a month, no matter how many customers you have. Then I started the Professional Trainer Society. We had over 1,400 members before we launched. Can't remember what we charged for that. Do you guys remember? It was like 20 or 30 bucks a month or something like that. And that was like a full on membership site. Like we had progression, mm-hmm. it was built really, really well. And what forms in our own community on the inside, we were delivering content, trying to produce good enough content on an ongoing basis. I got frustrated because we were producing this incredible material that simply wasn't being used. Even people in the membership site weren't really using it. And Mm -hmm. we couldn't give it to the rest of our audience, which means that we were spending a lot of money and time and effort producing this that could do a lot of good, that could bring in a lot of other customers for things that were way more profitable for us that we couldn't by definition offer it to them because it's what these people were paying for right. in, in, mm-hmm. in the membership. And like, good like starting a forum from scratch now in the days of Facebook and social media. Like, you're, you know, I, I, I spoke to Anthony Renner the other day uh, from strengthcoach.com, uh, Mike Boyles, and they have great forums and there's a lot of value in those forums. Those forums have been there for 10 years. Right. And then we did uh, Fitness Marketing Monthly, which was a subscription program. Mm -hmm. And same type of thing. We launched that with 1,615 members at $40 a month before we sent out the first issue. Mm -hmm. So that subscription program was, um, by the end of the first year, I mean, well over a seven-figure with with a healthy, I think it was about 34% profit margin. 4% profit margin. And we shut that down after 10 issues. We completed it. We shut that down after 10 issues. And that wasn't the initial 10. And the reason that we did that was, was similar to the Professional Trainer Society. We were producing unquestionably the best marketing and business development material ever produced for the fitness industry. Anybody who's seen yep. these issues knows that to be true. Yep. And we could not use it anywhere else. Anywhere. And it was, it was so sad that we that we weren't using this to drive the rest of our business that that it was so much time so much effort to do it that we shut that down and completed it and we also hit 10 issues and we were like hey we've kind of actually spoken about everything we want to speak about but the reason that i bring that up is like we've done this all like literally all of it on a big scale Mm -hmm. and if you have the ability to do one on a scale where the numbers are meaningful enough, you can get so much more out of in such with such smart, smarter business models than building a membership model. If there's just there's just so many better ways to operate than that. If you had software, it would be different. You know, if your PT distinction completely different. Now you've got a SaaS model that like software as a service SaaS. Now you've got a SaaS model that by definition locks people into using the software, right? Once you've got five clients in a software program, you're probably not going to switch, which means your lifetime value is way up. But if you're doing like a content delivery membership model, what's keeping people there? Your lifetime value is going to be low. Your customer acquisition costs are going to be high. And if you're spending that much and have the ability to generate enough customers that care enough to spend $20, you can get a tiny fraction of that coast customers to give you 300 bucks a month, get way better results with them, only work with good people. And then the people who are only willing to spend 20 bucks, sell them an ebook. True. You know, you mentioned something else earlier that resonated with everyone else in our little Brady Bunch, you know, circle of squares right here. We're all <laughs> shaking our heads up and down. Uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to go to our in the field correspondent, Catalina Romanes <laughs> Uh because we've all had this experience. And it was Jonathan. It was when you mentioned the 
the trouble that comes with the underpriced client. Uh, like oh we, we all had this, you know, yes. we, like, and I just, you know, full disclosure, I just recently learned totally. this the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Keto, have you, is, is that your experience you ever, you ever too? Like a when you program to a family or friend? Oh <laughs> right. my gosh. <laughs> right. yeah, don't, like, yeah, don't do that. No, like, no. Do, do you, do you find Carol that when you're under a certain amount with your, your clients that, uh, that those are the clients that just need the most attention always? Yeah, there's, I, I don't know what the tipping point is, but there certainly is a correlation. Like the lower you charge, the more you are taken for granted and the right. more you're expected to like jump through hoops and resolve things instantly and everything. Like I've as never a heard price, it spoken that way. I love that. The more, like the, the, the less you charge, the more you're taken advantage of. Yeah, you're taken that's, for that's granted. Really, yeah. That's, that's great. Amber, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> can it, can it, this is how he gets all of his, you know, yeah, all of what he puts out. Oh, in gonna be, gonna be <laughs> you, you're gonna be the uh, what's what's the thing? The audiogram. You, your this quote will definitely be the audiogram for this. For this, another uh, way to get taken advantage it. of is um, you don't actually have to be the one who gets results. You have to be the one who gets credit for those results happening. And so I don't actually have to be the one who thought of that great phrase. I just have to be the one who shares it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that is just low. <laughs> low, man. Unless you no. Okay, go on. No, keep talking. This is good. Yeah, no, this is good. Let me give you more material. <laughs> he's, um, he's, he's got his notepad out. I feel the 12th book coming what shortly bullshit? after this. What is this? What bullshit? <laughs> Reading book number 12. Why does right? this book read with yeah. a Mexican accent? Strange. <laughs> Um, what are all but, these upside down question marks? Right, why, right. So, why is it? Why? Why is it? Every time you laugh, you say ja 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 ja. Like, why is that happening? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so there's gonna be, I don't know, like I imagine that graph, like there is kind of like a tipping point and there is a correlation, like the lower that you charge, the more that is expected of you. I don't know why, but the higher the prices go, the, I guess the, the, uh, the expectations of the people also kind of like match, like, I guess, like they expect a lot from you in terms of the process, mm -hmm. the system, right. the result, because in the end they're hiring you for a result. They want you to solve their problem. Right. And in that sense, you absolutely must keep to your end of the pact and of course deliver those results and do everything in, in your power to solve that problem for them because that's what, what they're hiring you for. And when the price is lower, I feel like our boundaries are a lot looser. We mm -hmm. don't have that specific, uh, oh, this is the problem that I'm... And so they expect you to solve everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Well, it's also, I, I agree. And, and I also think it's a different quality of person that comes through. Yes. I mean, the type of person that can afford, not like this isn't an across the board type thing, obviously. Right. But generally, the type of person who can afford to pay more is, is most often a different caliber of person. That's why they can afford to pay more. Now, that's not always the case. 100% that's not always the case. We have, for example, in our community, we have incredible trainers who have, you know, maybe not grown up with, with every advantage or the transitioning into the industry, or quite frankly, they got kicked in the teeth a few times, you know, and that, and so they're building themselves up. And that's why, that's why I like the idea of having, like, we still have resources that can help them, but right. those resources are things like books or things like free articles that help them get to the point where they can invest in something where we can really take them by the hand, like the online trainer academy, we could really take them by the hand and, and, and help them work through that next step. And, and I think that that's valuable to have. I think it's, it's, to say, to not promise that you're going to solve all of these problems mm -hmm. because in effect, you're, you're lying. You're not going to be able to deliver on your promise mm -hmm. for those people.
I think also an important thing to remember is like, again, for the people who are super afraid of charging more, um, like for me, like, I feel like I have a very strong compass moral. Like I feel very called to help other people. And so many trainers can relate to that because you come into this industry a lot of the times with a desire to help everybody that you can. And that's wonderful. And I think what was kind of like a, a change of, of perspective for me was realizing that the more that I charge, to the people who can pay the higher price, that also enables me to create scholarship options for the people who legitimately can not and free afford. content. Yes, right. like it and frees I up my time. Mm -hmm. I have more time to create other stuff, other resources for the people who can, who yeah. can, who really want and have the desire and have everything, and they do, legitimately don't have the money. It's okay mm -hmm. to help them, and for that, you need the higher paying client. It's okay to charge what you're worth. Because that enables you to help others. Who well, can't. and it's and it's altruism aside. It's a smarter business model. We're living in the day of the personal brand and of the platform. There is nothing else in the world more valuable than your personal brand and your personal platform and your personal reputation. The more you invest into that, the more you build a business model whereby you can invest into that the better position you're going to be moving forward. Talk about resiliency. How do you build a resilient business that is immune to anything outside out of your control? Like, I don't know, a pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm, go figure. You yeah. create a platform based off of, of a great amount of content, based off of serving people and, and gathering them and if you hide all of your best stuff behind a paywall for small amounts of money, yep, it won't work for you. No, you're you're leaving people because, out, and you're missing out on the big gains. Yep, yep, for sure. And the marginal value of a dollar continues to diminish every single day. Money is is money is not a thing. Money is a tool, and what you can buy with money actually diminishes every day because of this widening wealth gap. And so once you kind of have enough of it, it actually makes a lot more sense to invest that money. Like this is like one of Robert Greene's 48 laws of power. Like, like one of the laws of power is you must keep money circulating. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make money, you don't hoard it. You keep it circulating. You keep it working for you. And the best way you could possibly keep it working for you is producing more assets that work for you, real assets, right? Mm -hmm. Things that go out in the world and cap capture reputation. That just makes your life easier and easier and easier. As opposed so to keeping your best stuff behind a paywall and spending your money to build that and generating a little bit more money, but like not enough to really make a difference and then putting it in a bank or investing it. I mean, even investing it in stocks and stuff like that. It's, it's nowhere close to the same kind of returns. It's, um, it's interesting because this is the exact same answer that Jonathan gave me when I asked him when I was going to get it paid for the podcast. Um, <laughs> so I can see how you draw that corollary. Uh, I understand it better in this context, but when I asked you, like, am I getting paid for it? Like, I mean, well, you know, it's decide. interesting because the value of the dollar diminishes. On, I was like, okay, okay, I'm in, dude. Like, okay. Yeah, and all you could hear was like Charlie Brown, like the right, hips, right. Like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but like, like, but it's it's true. Like, I, I didn't even need to say to say that stuff to you because you guys you guys got it. But yeah, I mean, you guys do get paid for like for anybody listening. Like, you guys do get paid for the podcast, <laughs> right? Like, and it's not like it's not pennies. You know, it's not like like you ain't getting rich off of it. But I think it's like, I think it's like a fair amount to like pay you for your time and expertise for what you're doing for the podcast. But at the same time, it's overly fair for my expertise. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But like at the same time, you guys, you guys obviously understand what we're doing here, right? You guys, this is turning more and more into your brand. Right. to claim the association, being able to have this work out in the world, like who knows what it's going to turn into. Right. I'm still but on the fence. I don't negative. know. I don't know that I want to claim this association yet. I'm not sure. I'm still <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be, that last episode was really good. But, yeah, yeah, because I wasn't here. <laughs> but 
<laughs> like who knows what it's going to turn into, right? We have no idea. And we have no idea what it's going to turn into for you guys, but there's basically no way it's going to be a negative. Right. No, for sure. Right. We know right. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, that's a whole other topic too. Like that's, that's a great overlooked topic in the industry is what your non-monetary uh, sort of payments are in this industry mm -hmm. and how they connect to propelling your brand. Because a lot of us get consumed with money. You know, what's, what am I going to charge? What is it going to pay? Well, right. it's really the currency in our, in our business is really relationships. That's yeah, your number yeah. one currency. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amber, write I that think, down. I think we should do this for a topic. I think we should, <laughs> oh, we should we do this for a topic. We got to wrap it up. Oh, so we got to wrap, 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 wrap it up iPad. That's wrap it up. upgraded from the notebook. That's anybody, uh, anybody knows this, uh, anybody knows where I'm getting this from, um, send in a message. You won't get a prize or money because that's <laughs> ridiculous. But uh, maybe I'll give you like a thumbs up if I see the message. Uh, wrap it up, B. Wrap it up. Anybody no know idea. I'm I lost. I know, so no I'm, idea. I, I don't want to ruin it for the other podcast. And this and this uh this also allows me to remain ignorant to what the answer is and but make it seem like I know what it is. <laughs> so <laughs> so this is episode ten. You've you've been here enjoying the the information, the banter, the witty repartee of episode ten. We hope it was a <laughs> blessing to your spirit and your soul. <laughs> Um, train more clients in less time with better results. PT distinction. Had to sneak that one in there. We've got a drinking game coming up next episode. A la Amber Reynolds, she sent me a message about a drinking game. We'll we'll, anou we'll announce that on the next show. If you're and not drunk already. PT distinction. Will you get the special deal? OnlineTrainer.com slash PTD. That's part of the drinking game. That's so ironic. Uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. Like, subscribe. Show notes. Wait a minute. I got to do the show notes, Amber. Show notes are at online trainer.com slash podcast show notes subscribe like follow review we're at episode 10 so reviews are allowed now thanks so much for listening yes. to episode 10 the online trainer show bye good job Amber, did you want to say anything i forgot to i forgot to bring you on no i'm just i'm i'm impressed you remember you got everything done well, Jonathan Only had to remind tries. me. Only he had to remind tries. me of the last ad again. But that's part of the drinking game. Every time you have to remind me of an ad, they drink. Uh, every what was oh the other God. one, Amber? Every time you. Every time the mayor gets mentioned. Yeah, they drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there was a third one. What was the third one? Every time poop is mentioned. Yes. Poop. <laughs> The mere mentioning of poop. We had the trifecta in this episode. Yeah, this is what, that's what made me think of it. I feel we, like we got all of them. We got we got all of them in this episode. So oh, you know. McDonald had a poop. We <laughs> <laughs> flushed it in the toilet. E I E I O. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>